Hi everyone, it's um, Nathan from Geometry Gym here and today I want to go through a really recent development we've um, implemented into our eTabs plugin um, and that is the ability to create a grid axis system um, within Grasshopper um, to automatically generate your grids in eTabs. Up until recently this has been quite a uh, difficult and time consuming task um, but I know a lot of structural engineers like to, I guess, start a structural analysis model with the grids and I know from my own experience the first thing I'll generally do when setting up a structural analysis model is to define the grids, whether it's from an architectural background or something like that. I'm going to show you how you can use Rhino and Grasshopper to uh, start to parametrically define these grid systems and also use them um, to start to help you start to generate your your structural analysis model so uh, I'm just going to run you through a quick script today um, which will, which will generate a building similar to this um, but mainly concentrating on 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 this new component um, the grid axis system um, component so uh, if you go to the geometry gym structural analysis tab in grasshopper and under the GG eTabs element um, panel. With there's a new component called eTabs Grid Axis System, which is similar to one that I've got on the canvas, which is on the canvas there. Um, you'll also notice that there's a, an eTabs Decompose Grid Axis System, and what this allows you to do is bring in an axis system that's already been defined from an existing eTabs model um, when you when you import a a eTabs model. So um, I won't go through that th in this video but there will be more videos coming on this later on. So this the create axis system allows you to create a rectangular grid axis system um, with x uh, with the with labels in the x and y direction um, by providing a list of ordinates so um, values generally how you would do it in, in eTabs. It also gives you the ability to uh, insert um, uh, general grids, which are grids created from um, lines or, or curve elements. And we're going to do a mixture of both uh, in this example. So I'm just going to quickly run through how I've uh, set this grid system up for this particular building um, and, and the outline. So I've got an input. Um, which is basically the building width input. Uh, this will generate two points, um, one either side of the um, XY plane um, at the designated building width. And I've also got a building length, which will do a similar thing, but in the uh, Y direction. These values are going to basically be the extents of my rectangular grid plane. In order to um, generate the building outline, um, I can create a polyline between between these points, uh, which generates a rectangular, uh, or, well, a diamond shaped building. And then to give the building a little bit of a shape, um, I've rounded, I've, I've rounded the, um, the sharp edges here. In order to easily uh, generate the grids in the in the x and y directions, I can simply create a line between those uh, those extreme points uh, for the, for my diamond shape. So I can create a line in the uh, x direction and create a line in the y direction. I can then subdivide those lines with the number of grids um, with the number of grids I want. Um, in each of those um, in each of those directions, get the points and then simply extract um, the x um, coordinate values to simply then um, specify my my grids in my x in my x and then also uh, the grids in my y. I can also generate or automatically generate the um, the sequencing of the grid naming um, 
so in the x direction I've got a series of numbers in the y direction I've got a series of letters now what this grid axis system does is automatically generate these lines in Rhino and Grasshopper. So you don't have to spend time um, generating them using your own scripting and, and cluttering up the script. Um, and you'll automatically get um, curves for your X um, and y, y grid coordinates, which you can use downstream. Lastly, uh, I want to set up a bunch of grids which aren't particularly rectangular in nature, but I want them to be assigned to this grid system. So I want to set um, I want to set a bunch of grids which uh, go along the facade line in four directions. Well, in direction um, parallel to the diamond base edge, as well as some grid lines um, at the core. So. What I've done to generate these is basically offset my original um, diamond polyline uh, by a distance inset in where I want to place the columns. I can then simply explode that line um, into four lines, and then just to make the grid lines look a little bit a little bit better, I can extend those um, extend those past. Similar with the core lines, um, I've basically just generated a rectangle at where I want my core walls uh, to be located. I can do a similar thing. I can explode those lines and then I've also fed them into this extend curve to just um, make them look a little bit more like grid lines. I can then um, place those curves into the general grid lines um, parameter input. And again, I've automatically created um, the labeling for these. And then you can, sh you can also see them um, generated here as an output. The power with this is now I can start to use these output curves, which I've just generated from um, a couple of coordinate numbers to start to generate my, my structure. So in this instance, I'm basically, I'm just doing a multiple curves intersection um, with the grids in the y direction um, and, and my output or, or, or um, offset um, column line um, curve, which gives me a bunch of, a bunch of points around the perimeter of the building. Um, and then I can, uh, like similar scripts um, I've shown before, I can then choose how many levels I want um, and start to generate columns and uh, and like um, for a building, you know, and then I guess with, with parametric design, if I start to tweak some of these numbers, um, my grids will start to, will start to um, change and my, my building will start to, um, you know, can be updated quite quickly. And also as I start to, uh, or change the building, the building, or the building, or the building length. So lots of different options um, and the structures based off that grid system. Uh, and just to show you what that what that structure is, is looking like in, in Rhino at the moment, once you've once you've applied all your uh, uh, structural properties, framing uh, types. Um, slab and and core wall types um, as well as your restraints and and, and loads and or, or whatever that you want to um, you want to use to um, to send to etabs um, it is it is literally a matter of, of then um, double clicking to to send to etabs and there you go so you you've basically imported this uh, your your grid system from Rhino into etabs um, as well as your as well as your building model, um, and you can see these these grid systems along the edges, um, as well as your rectangular grid system. I hope you've enjoyed this video um, on how to generate a grid axis system in Rhino Grasshopper and send that to ETabs. I really do think this is a 
quite a powerful enhancement um, to the eTabs plugin, which um, I'm really excited to see what um, what people are going to do with this. So, um, uh, yeah, hope you've enjoyed the video, and um, please subscribe uh, to stay up to date with with more videos that we produce um, with similar type of uh, content. So, thank you.